That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Supernova, the sophomore film directed by Harry McQueen, which Bleecker Street is releasing on January 29th, 2021. Uh, premiered at the 2020 San Sebastian Film Festival. Uh, it stars Colin Firth and Stanley Tucci uh, as a long married gay couple. Stanley Tucci is Tusker and Colin Firth is Sam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we find Sam and Tusker on a road trip in like an RV mm -hmm. headed to like, uh, like a, do we know it's a sister's house? Uh, He's driving to a sister's house, but yes. they're making like a trip out of it because we find out Tusker, Sam, Stanley Tucci's character is suffering from early onset dementia. And we find out that he's been struggling with that for two years and it's progressively getting worse. Um, we also realized that this trip has been planned. However, Tusker has, uh, has a surprise mm -hmm. in store, which is that he has invited a bunch of friends and family members um, to sort of surprise Sam. Mm -hmm. So the trip culminates with them at, this, at Sam's sister's house. There's like a big dinner with all the friends. Um, and at the dinner, like at this party, Sam is talking to a friend and it's important to know that Sam is a pianist mm -hmm. and Tusker is a writer. Because the end of the trip is supposed to be uh, Sam. Sam uh, in a concert. At, at doing a solo yeah. concert. Tusker's a writer, and in the initial part of their road trip, Tusker is like attempting to ride, and Sam's asking him how it's going. And he's like, great, just a little bit of writer's block, but everything's great. So at this party, Sam is talking to one of Tusker's friends. And the friend is like, yeah, it's so sad that Tusker can't even put like pen to paper. And Sam's like, what are you talking about? Well, he's like, who said that? Yeah, like, what are you talking about? Who said that? And he's like, Tusker told me. So Sam's upset because he didn't realize that Tusker can't even write. So Sam goes out to the RV, rummages through Tusker's things and finds his writing journal mm -hmm. and sees that effectively like his writing has declined as time has passed. So it goes from like coherent sort of entries to like scribble to blank pages. Mm -hmm. Obviously very upsetting. He also finds um, a prescription for um, a sedative intended to, you know, obviously like kill himself with. <laughs> and he also finds a tape recording and the tape recording reveals that Tusker planned this trip and the concert performance to coincide with him committing suicide so on the night that sam is out performing on his piano tusker would be at home and take the medication but sam hears it he keeps it to himself but they drive to their next location to spend the night in this beautiful cottage mm -hmm. and sam confronts tusker mm -hmm. and says like they they have the conversation like I don't want to be alone. You can't do this. You're still fine. I'll take care of you. The whole thing. It culminates, I mean, ultimately they decide that, well, there is no decision. The film just ends with Sam playing his piano performance. They, ha they have an intimate night in, in the bed. And then in the next morning, um, Colin, Sam is playing this piece of music that, um, Earlier that, on, that the Tusker film. has said, "Like I love this piece where you never play it for me, and it's Salut d'Amour by uh, Edward Elgar." Uh, and he's playing in the morning, and he says to him in the window, "Like uh, basically, I want to be there with you when you do this." Like he's decided to let go. And then the final shot of the film is Colin Firth, presumably at his concert, you know, playing this song. But we don't know what happened. Yes. So we don't know if Tusker went ahead with it, if he did it the night of the concert if he did it at all or before. So that was a struggle only because the story to me is very flat and simple. <laughs> it's a beautiful, tender story, very quiet. Sure, it's a, it's a very small film and I think that some might find it underwhelming. Uh, although I think if you're, um, you know, a little older, it might be... Mm. What? No, we watched it with a friend. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, the friend is a very sensitive person. Hey, and then I'm not. And then you're probably in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of us really, this one didn't take us anywhere. No, because I was fully expecting sniffles and I had a box of tissue ready to throw at someone. 
I think it, uh, McQueen made a, a very uh, conscious choice to make this as non-melodramatic as possible, which I, I appreciate. Mission accomplished. I did feel things when, at, at the party, Stanley Tucci's gonna make a toast and he has a prepared letter, and he can't, for whatever reason, read it, and he gives it to Sam to read, so Sam is ostensibly kind of reading about himself in this, this toast to himself. It's effective. I thought that was effective. Yeah. I, I think the importance of seeing a, a queer couple, albeit played by straight men who have both played gay men before, um, it, that are just seen as kind of normal and just struggling with growing old together in a very normal way into this, you know, health tragedy strikes. Uh, I, I, I'm very appreciative of that. Um, and I, I do, I have seen plenty of films where the opposite tactic is taken, like like uh, 2017's The Leisure Seeker with Helen Mirren and Donald Sutherland, where, where Sutherland is suffering from the same thing and Helen Mirren is witness to his uh, descent and, and they're driving around in the RV that shares the same name. Uh, and that I found very hokey and trivializing. And, and this I don't think does that. No. And while it doesn't have any major peaks or highs and lows, I think it stays true to the effects of what this looks like for the person that's going to stay behind. Because also, usually usually these movies, the grandstand acting is for the person dying. Like Julianne Moore won the Oscar for that, Julie Christine away from her, um, or even Ordinary Love with Liam Neeson and Leslie Manville, which... We, I like that movie. I did, but you know, there, there's... It, it, it tries to steer clear of all those, instead focusing on poetics, like Tucci's scene about where the title comes from, because as Moby once said, we're all made of stars. And, and kind of that, that little monologue about how, you know, when a star implodes, it, or explode, it's, it releases these, these particles, this supernova, that eventually will make it, its way to Earth and become all, part of all of us. You're right. Yeah, I, I think my mistake was just sort of being used to like, I was likening this to what I felt when I was watching those late 90s films about gay male couples one who is like sort of about to hit ha having aids maybe and like deteriorating quickly and that how that goes and the emotions that that brings up sure uh, but that's a whole different trauma. exactly um, yes yeah. so i i think that was my mistake coming into this film was i was expecting to feel like have those feelings and instead like you said it was a much more sort of restrained normal um, experience and it feels very authentic yeah it, yeah it, it it's hard to gripe about it but yeah I can see how it would be underwhelming because we have such expectations about this subgenre of disease films per se and uh, I, I think that um, the conversation we all had after watching was how they sometimes don't seem like a couple because they're not warm towards one another um, but I think that people who have been together for years often seem that way too. Like sure. they're, they're so comfortable together, the acknowledgement of being a couple isn't in the uh, each interaction that they're having. Sure. Um, I like how it was shot, was shot by Dick Pope, um, who has lens, you know, a, a many of Mike Lee's films. We reviewed The Reflecting Skin, which he shot, um, that 1990 movie on uh, Blu-ray. Uh, so it, it looks great. I think they're very sensitive portrayals. Uh, I thought they're both good. I don't know the Oscar buzz being mounted for either of them. I, 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 it's not really in a showy movie, so. No, I don't have any notes because the story is very basic and it, there really are no highs or lows. It's just like a quiet film with good acting and a basic story. And I think you and I are both pretty, we're kind of morbid people. Like we had this conversation years ago about what would happen if something like, uh, d like if dementia were to happen and so I, I think the reveal of Colin Firth finding out that you're going to kill yourself and not tell me is like, well, don't you see how selfish you are that you would make this person be a vegetable? Um, so, uh, you know, everybody has different um, ideas. Because I was expecting Tusker to be like, like to get upset with him at a point and just say like, look, this is my life. I'm not trying to spend the rest of my time being a vegetable. Uh, but he doesn't really ever... Like, no, and that's why it made me think they are kind of a loving couple. Yes, yes. I don't have any issues with this film, except that it's very quiet. And it, it, I, yes, it is on the dry and side. a little dry, um, very dry. But there's some great moments in the script. I, I like Tucci's line about being, 
being sad something's gone just means it was great while it was there. Which is about kind of, that sums up the simplicity of the, the narrative. Like it's just eloquent in a simple way. Okay. What would you give it? I would give it three and a half out of five. I would give it three and a half as well. Thank you. Bye.